Well, you'd, you'd have to know a little bit more about the science. The, the mutational processes that I was just talking about are running downhill informationally. Eventually, if you keep, mu if you keep, if you oh, keep you. mutating uh, those systems, uh, that temporary advantage is going to be swamped by the destruction of the, of the proteins and protein machines that are pro uh, involved in, in, in information processing. So you can't extrapolate from a system that's running downhill informationally to explain the origin of large amounts of new functional information. That requires something new. Uh, I, I had an article recently in a, in, in a London newspaper, and a, 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 a professor wrote in who works on computational simulations of evolutionary theory. He says, I don't see why they both can't be true. He says, what I see is the programmer puts the original information in the system, and then evolution takes over from there. Uh, James Shapiro at the University of Chicago is working on uh, pre-programmed adaptive capacity. And my friend Paul Nelson went and talked to him. They were on a panel. Shapiro said, you know, I can't make head or tail of what you guys are talking about with intelligent design. Nelson went to talk to Shapiro, and he said, look, you're really into this idea of pre-programmed adaptive capacity as a kind of alternative to strict Darwinism. Um, we think that's a neat phenomenon. Uh, let me ask you a question, Jim. Where does the programming come from in the first place? And Shapiro apparently said to Nelson, uh, you know, I rarely think about that. And Nelson said, but that's what we think about. And I think the two can go together. There are real evolutionary phenomena that can be studied, but the origination of the programming is something that I think requires design. Peter, you're going to respond to that? Yeah, I, I just, it just, as I listen to this, I keep asking myself the question, and this, this sounds so good, till I get to, well, I'm, I'm a curious person. Show me the designer. How? how and show me a way through your methodology that I can understand that designer. I, I mean, I how, can I, how can I expose this wonderful designer? Isn't it, aren't you curious about what the designer is and how are you going to find out? Well, you learn the, the identity. Uh, some things about the, the designer by the nature of the effects. That, I think that's actually your, your comment uh, betrays a little bit of a, a naive view of the way science works. Pardon the... But, <laughs> sorry, I didn't mean it to be insulting. I, don't, I really don't. I just mean... I think people often overlook the fact that science is indirectly inferential. There's lots of things in physics, quarks, fundamental forces that we don't observe directly. We infer them because of their explanatory power with respect to other things we do observe. Okay, well, and, let's and give, we me do the same thing with give me a design. test. Give me a test. You posited what, what, a designer be there? because the attributes of intelligence explain the kind of phenomena that we see better than undirected processes. Then give me a test. I, I've given you one already. I've several. I mean, uh, they've failed my limited ability to understand your test. Here's, here's, here's a question for, for me, but I'll turn it into one for all of us. It says, why does the Seattle Times promote this as a debate about science, criticism of evolution by intelligent design supporters, promote public skepticism about science that leads to increased scientific illiteracy at a time when we can ill afford it, which is what Peter Ward has been saying. Uh, I'll answer briefly, but I'd like Actually, you guys to start. We, I don't know that we did promote it as a debate about science, and in fact, w one of the disagreements I think that Discovery Institute has with what I wrote was that I didn't pay enough attention to the science. I'm a political reporter, not a science reporter, not a religion reporter, um, and it's, it's, we were talking about this before we came out. I think this thing, uh, this issue leaks into a lot of different areas. It is about politics. It is about the legal system in this, this country. Well, and it's, um, it's also about larger philosophical questions. If but you start to talk about human origins, biological origins, cosmological origins, the, the, I mean, the wonderful thing about modern science is that we can address those questions. But however you end up answering those questions, you're going to, your, your answers will have larger philosophical but implications. But you guys want to keep it wholly in science. We, 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 we do want to do scientific work that, exp that is attempting to explain evidence. But we're not, we're not uh, uh, immune to the fact that whether you take a Darwinian view, a self-organizational view, a punk -eek view, uh, an intelligent design view, th that you're going to raise larger philosophical questions. To particularize my answer, uh, we were talking about the teach the controversy issue a minute ago. We think teaching the controversy promotes scientific literacy. There's in the many biology textbooks to the present day, we have errors of omission. Cambrian explosion is hardly mentioned. Oh, nonsense. No, in, at the high oh, school level, we've, we've surveyed these. Get one short line in Miller and Levine, the rest of them hardly mention it. You still have errors of commission. Things like the, the, uh, the Heckel embryo diagrams, which have been known to be false for a long time. They're, they're still being recycled, uh, recycled in, in biology textbooks. So a critical outsider's perspective from a different theoretical point of view is, is, is very helpful in improving scientific literacy. I have to ask a question of you folks. You've asked some of us. Did anybody's mind get changed tonight? 
All right. I didn't think it would. Uh, we, that was not a requirement, though. Did we have fun? <laughs> yes. Sort of. Uh, Peter, let me ask you, the, 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 the sort of this, you know, you're a scientist, you come here to argue largely the science, but, you know, you talked about politics, you talked about some of these other pieces. What, what is the view of your colleagues and, and, and what you hear at the university about, about you coming to argue uh, about intelligent design? Yeah, that's a great question. I think uh, where I give credit to the Discovery Institute and the ID movement is that they have been tremendous public relations specialists. That as a political movement, I just take my hats off to you. That's called being damned with faint praise, and I don't yes. accept the compliment. Uh, Others I might accept, not that one. So, so I see it in two ways. What if you're correct, but it's clear that the way we have taught science in this country has led us to become the premier scientific leader of the world. Our universities I have no peer in the rest of the world. I mean, we can pretty well say that, and our standard of living owes an awful lot to that. So, and you're claiming that, Dar that let me evolution finish, right? let me is finish. responsible for that? I, I would say in science, as we teach it, is responsible for that. So what if you're right, and it turns out it's all by intelligent design? Well, but we keep teaching it the way we're teaching it. Everything's fine. But what if you're wrong, and it turns out that it was done by natural causes, but then we change it to the way you want to teach it? Then, uh, then your, what your then? overwhelmingly compelling evidence will will show the the, uh, no, no, the I'm fabulous thinking, nature of intelligent I'm more design practical in the than that. I'm more practical than that. I'm thinking about China would love us to go down this road. They already produce more engineers than we do. They already produce more scientists than engineering we do. Engineering is a design field. I, 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 again, engineers come, back to come this point, from scientists first. Studying studying the studying the biological system as a system that was actually designed, as opposed to one that was only appears to be designed. Uh, could be very, very fruitful in understanding more about life. And in the process, we may understand more about engineering. By the way, uh, we have this list of dissenting scientists, now over 600, who question... And how many hundreds of thousands uh, of pro scientists? We have been criticized, criticized because many of the professors who have signed this are professors of electrical, uh, computer, or mechanical engineering. And one of the things I want to say to you all is that we, uh, if you have trouble... Uh, convincing smart engineers that you can build these complex systems that we find in cells, the circuits, the software, the, the, the miniature machines. If, if you can't convince engineers of that, then I think... Uh, how many engineers out of all the engineers? A, how many, look, let's be serious about this. You've got 600 people. How many scientists are there in the world who are not taking your point of view? Come on, let's be, you guys love numbers. You live on numbers. 600 versus 100,000, 200,000? Let's see. That's pretty equal, all right. Uh, w w there's no there's no data on that, but there has been a comprehensive survey of, of U.S. of U.S. medical doctors. <laughs> there there isn't. We don't know that. You can't just help yourself to the remainder. Uh, yeah. the, no. no. Uh, sixty percent. Sixty percent of U.S. medical doctors reject the full-blown neo-Darwinian evolution. Oh, where? Who survey. says that? No, it's a recent, it's a recent survey. Oh, We've got it up on our website. Uh, Steve, you know. this, I asked you this question oh. earlier. And, and my my point really... is that people that actually have to build things are very much more sensitive to the case for design than, than qualitative biologists who can wave their hands and say mutation done it. We, we quit being vegetarians. The there is red meat in the hall. <laughs> here it is. Let's let the audience get a few more questions in here. Here's a nice easy one. How did life start? Um, and if it was uh, some form of intelligent or a bang, and if you both believe in evolution, then aren't you both basically in agreement? I mean, do these two ar arguments, if they're not... You've got to read my book. I've got a new idea. <laughs> yeah, well, share with it. But, it, it, but it is a good book, Peter. Could, yeah, it is a good and book. And do you guys agree on... How do life start? It yeah. depends on how evolution I don't know what his is, point of view is. is. Uh, my, my point of view is that the, is the origin of life is one of the... The problem of the origin of life, 